in love with my country when I was a prisoner in someone else's. I loved it, not just for the many comforts of life here. I loved it for its decency, for its faith, the wisdom, justice, and goodness of its people. Thank you. Senator McCain was symbolizing the dignity, the personality, who was fighting for our independence, and uh, he did everything, just our part of the world, to be independent. We came tonight in a tradition to award the NJC very precious award this year for extraordinary achievements of extraordinary men. The Honorable, Unforgettable Senator McCain. You know him very well. We work with him. Not just myself, we had all of us meetings with him. He was by our side. He was helping, he was supporting, he was giving a hope, he was giving a strength. I would never forget his eyes, his hand, his words. He was always talking about not just struggles and fights, but about the moral issues we face and about the moral struggle. He was always saying about the values that will govern and should govern our world. He was always to us by once again and again repeating the words allies. He was a, such a strong proponent and an engine for the transatlantic alliance. He never questioned, he always supported. So let us come back to the core of what Senator McCain represents to all of us. Let us unite ourselves that if we think about him, if he continues to be in our minds and in our hearts, he's alive. As long as we keep the memory, as long as we talk about his legacy, as long as we continue fighting for his values, he's alive. He continues to be an example to all of us. And I'm very grateful to the team of NGIC, to all of the members of the board, who united themselves into awarding the Honorable Senator McCain in this very important award. We give based on the values that saved our planet, morals that should compass our lives and should help us overcome the difficulties as the example of Senator McCain. While this evening is really about recognizing the enormous contributions of Senator McCain, I, I'm here to say a few words about Cindy McCain and recognize her work. She has focused herself on many global issues and has been a global leader on so many fronts in her own right. As you all know, after today, eradicating modern slavery is part of the SDGs. It's a key part of the Sustainable Development Agenda and, and SDG 8.0. As we heard today, climate change will likely expand this crime of economic opportunity and its impact on the most vulnerable. There is no one more committed to fighting modern-day slavery than Cindy McCain. You all know that both Cindy and the Senator dedicated their lives to improving the welfare of others, both in the United States and around the world. Together, they created the McCain Institute for International Leadership, which Cindy now leads. She is a dedicated colleague and a true advisor, role model, and a true collaborator, which we all know in this day and age is not a given. So we thank you for that. And from my vantage point, the partnership between you and the Senator is a role model for all of us to emulate. So thank you so much for everything you've done. Uh, dear Cindy McCain, I happen to know uh, Senator John McCain for over 30 years, and I'm proud of being able to call him a friend. 
I met him dozens of times in Washington DC, in Munich, in Halifax, and in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. He was a great, a giant friend of the state of Israel, never shy of criticism, but always standing behind us when it comes to the security and existence of Israel. On the political level, he sometimes criticized us to be too soft on security and too tough on other aspects of the, of the arrangement with our, our neighbors. John McCain was a man who loved to fight, a beacon of courage in the battlefield, courage in the prison, and courage in the political uh, fight. Genuine courage, genuine autonomy, genuine integrity, and very genuine sense of humor. He was a great fighter, great American, great friend of Israel, and great man indeed. Thank you. Good evening, dear friends and colleagues, distinguished guests, dear Mrs. McCain, our guests of honor. I join my voice to my colleagues in celebrating tonight the memory of a most remarkable man whom fate had tried and found never wanting either in courage, in endurance, or in faith in his ideals and what he felt to be his duty as an officer, a gentleman, an American, a patriot of his country, the third in line of a military family, and truly a, a war hero of remarkable proportions. I found in Senator McCain somebody who did not need uh, an ABC of our history, of our past, and the reasons for which we were seeking the security umbrella of collective, uh, of a collective alliance. Senator McCain knew the history of Eastern Europe better than any of his colleagues. We found in him an understanding and a, a kindred spirit. He respected our aspirations to independence and liberty, and we found in him a supporter in our path to NATO and a supporter of Eastern Europe in general, for which all the inhabitants of these countries will remain eternally grateful and his name will remain in our hearts. We are honoring tonight the memory of this man and I'd like to invite uh, Mrs. Cindy McCain to please come to the podium to receive the award of the Nizami Ganshevi Center. And to present that award, uh, I would like to ask Mrs. Kerry Kennedy to come as well, because last we, we already also have honored the memory of Robert F. Kennedy, uh, who stands for the same values from a different party uh, in America, uh, from the other side of the lines as they have in Britain, and yet both men represent the belief in the dignity of man and in the importance of the values of tolerance, understanding, and the love of freedom and the rule of law. Well, um, I just want to say that, you know, it's, there's such a division in our country today. There's such a division. All of the, each of the last presidential elections have been really basically 50-50. John McCain was one of the really close friends of Ted Kennedy. These are two men who completely disagreed on almost every issue, but they loved each other. And because 
They loved each other. They tried to find ways to work together. And that idea of how do we work together, even if we disagree on issues, but we find a common humanity, is really personified in the work of Mrs. McCain. She has devoted herself to doing this not only in our country but around the world through the McCain Institute. And that's, that's what this organization is about. Look around this room. These are people who have been political enemies but who are working together because you love humanity and because you believe, as my father did, that politics is an honorable profession. And we're holding on to the greatest ideals of humanity. That's what you personify. I hope you take this award not, in as a, not only as an award to your wonderful husband, but really as an award to you yourself for your incredible work and compassion and devotion to humanity. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you for this wonderful tribute to my husband and for all of the kind words for our special dignitaries that have, have, have been so thoughtful and so generous in your love and your honor of him. And please, please also know how great, grateful I am for this prestigious award uh, for the, the humanitarian that it is named for. And he was aptly described as the global citizen of his day. Um, I think it's an apt description for John as well. He was a proud son of America that the country he served for over 62 years loved. But his first loyalties for the, uh, were for the ideals of freedom and equal justice. Those loyalties were not restricted to his fellow Americans. He felt a kinship with people everywhere who recognized, as he did, the respect we owe each other for the dignity that is humanity's common possession. He felt privileged to serve the cause of human dignity wherever it was under assault, and in his words, to help make another a better world. The cause that he believed in is never finished and is never defeated. He was a realist who knew just how difficult this struggle could be, and who had personal experiences of suffering and abuse. But he could never be persuaded that justice was unattainable for some people. It's one thing to recognize obstacles to change, he wrote, and to understand the world as it is with all of its corruption and cruelty. But it is a moral failure to believe tyranny and injustice are the inevitable tragedies of man's fallen nature. He was a great man who tried hard to be a good man by helping those who needed him. Thank you so much for this award. I want you to know how very grateful I am that you would think of him and how much we miss, all miss him together. Thank you so much. Thank you.